Okay, well, let me introduce myself. I'm, uh, my name is Julie Osborne. Um, I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I'm a doctor in psychology. So um, I grew up in Buffalo, New York. So I came as far away as I could from <laughs> <laughs> California. Um, I originally came out here after I graduated. Um, and then I did go back to Buffalo for a few years to get my bachelor's in social work. And then I knew I had wanted to leave again. So I came back out here and um, I've been here for over 20 years now. Um, I went to school out here, finished my master's and my doctorate. So I've been in the field since 1985. Um, I've been doing the cognitive behavioral therapy for about 13 years now. Um, so it was developed, as Cynthia mentioned, by Dr. Aaron Beck. Um, the person that trained me, his name is Dr. Dennis Greenberger. And um, I met him when I worked over at Duceyne Medical Center. I was there for 10 years. And he was doing a group, and I had to take over the group and teach the psychiatry residents and um, how to do the cognitive therapy. And so I got lucky, really, it was a blessing that I met him. Um, and I got my training through him. And um, I love it. And I, you know, so again, I just kind of fell into it when I got hired at UCI. They're like, you have to do this group. And to be honest with you, when I first learned cognitive therapy, I thought, oh my God, this is so anal, I'm going to lose my mind. Because <laughs> it's a real process to learn. You know, it's step by step. But eventually what it is, is that it's just going to be an automatic way your brain thinks. So when you learn the process at first, and some people love it. I mean, it's funny, just personalities that come to my office, you know, people that are like engineers or whatever, they come in with their own forms, they come up with new stuff. And, you know, but everybody does like it because they see that you can get well quickly and you leave with tools. You know, and that's what you guys came today to learn how to manage your stress. So I want you to leave today feeling like you have some tools from us, not just information saying, well, now when I feel stress, I, you know, I have a couple things I can try differently, I can do differently, okay? And my, you know, philosophy with being a therapist is um, I want to teach you to be your own therapist because therapy, in my mind, is considered short-term, cognitive therapy, short-term therapy. But you come to, you know, be with a therapist, and it's not supposed to be forever. Supposed to learn what you need to learn to get well and get out there and live your life again. Okay, of course, there's some situations, you know, major traumas and things like that, people are in therapy longer, but overall, you can learn cognitive therapy quickly and you can see progress quickly, which also fits me as a therapist too, because I really like to start seeing people move in the, you know, forward direction and, you know, feel empowered. So when I talk today, I kind of look at it more like a psychoeducational talk that I want to give you, you know, knowledge is power. So I want to educate you on what cognitive therapy is and how you can start to use it in your own life and understand how um, it really you know, affects everything that's going on in your life. And all your belief systems, your values, that they're all based on the way you think about things. Okay, so let me just talk to you about what cognitive therapy is first. So the word cognition just means your thought process. Okay, you don't have to remember that word, but that's just what it means. And obviously behavioral and therapy. So the theory behind it is the way that you think is what creates your moods, okay? So behind me here is just a real basic diagram here of what the cognitive behavioral therapy is. So you have your thoughts, your moods, your behaviors, and your physical reactions, and then your environments. So these four here are connected, if you think of a baby's mobile, that it cannot be going on without the other 24-7. Because your brain never shuts down, ever, right? I mean, with dream at night, it just it never stops, okay? So what the problem that most people have, and why most people don't get better, is that they're living off of how they feel. Feelings and moods is the same thing, okay? So depending on how I feel, it's gonna determine what I do, okay? So what you do might actually feel good at the moment. Drinking a glass of wine, going shopping, staying in bed all day, you know, yelling at somebody, okay? It might be like, oh, I feel better, but the mood always comes back. And then the next time you feel the way, like, that glass of wine helps, maybe I'll have two this time. Okay, it's where a lot of addictions get started, right? Because people are numbing themselves out with whatever they're, whatever they're doing is to feel better, all right? And our society really, I think, um, creates this for us as well. The media, you know, if you drive my car, wear my clothes, drink my beer, you're gonna feel better. Oh, I'm telling you why I'm saying this, because I'm gonna feel better. And then you go, and, and you know, you, you see people, especially in Orange County, you know, I used to always think, I don't know, to me is everybody's doing good. You know, people, you know, dress, and you go to the malls. I was in Marshalls last week, and the line is so long. I say to the cash register, I said, there is no recession in Orange County. Because people are out doing and going, and restaurants are busy. So, you know, but people, I think, are doing those things to feel better. You 
even if they're doing dentist board right now, they should stay with their pens because they are stressed and they don't know how to make themselves feel better without getting something or doing a behavior that maybe in the long run isn't going to be best for them. Okay? So again, everybody's just running. So you want to think about yourself. Okay? And I'm going to do this with you in a few. Is, you know, what do I do? What are my behaviors when I'm not feeling good? And also, you know, in our society, everyone's, you know, if they ask you how you are, most people want to hear you say fine. Because most people really are uncomfortable with negative news, right? And I say, like, don't therapy doesn't work, right? Because you say to someone, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm kind of sad. Oh, don't feel that way, right? Or, don't, don't, don't. Look at your, got your family, you got a house, and your wife's great. And, you know, people minimize how you're really feeling because they're uncomfortable. They don't know what to do with it. So, you know, don't feel that way, but let's, you know, let's go shopping. I'll get you in a good mood. You know, as little kids, we come home, and maybe, you know, Sue is upset with Sally because Sally wasn't playing with her that day because Sally was with Jenny. You know, and she comes home crying, and her mom's like, oh, come here, you know, let me give you a hug, and I'll give you some cookies and milk, and let's watch a little cartoon so you'll feel better. But nobody, you know, she never asked her daughter, well, why do you think she wasn't playing with you today? Like, maybe, did you go over and ask if you could play with her and Jenny? You know, the little girl just saw, oh, she's playing with someone else who shouldn't want to be with that's the thought, right? Which makes her feel sad. So her behavior is, I'm not going to go over there, right? And we don't even know if any of that, they probably would have been fine with her, but they probably got busy playing together and just didn't even think about it. So our, as a parents, that's a great tool to learn. So you can start teaching your children how to communicate differently by asking them, what are you thinking? Instead of just dealing with your feelings. Because feelings change all the time, too. So I could come, you know, into the office and I could maybe walk by Cynthia and I'm like, hey, Cynthia, and she ignored me. And I think, forget her, she didn't say hello, right? I'm ready to, like, forget the friendship and done, right? Five minutes later, she's like, Julie, I think you just said hello to me, but you know what? I had a car accident on the way to work, and I'm just, like, so upset. And I'd be like, what can I do for you to help you out? But five minutes before, I was ready to end the friendship because I thought she was rude and she didn't acknowledge me. Can I say something? Yeah. It's really because I'm thinking about a case I have, okay. and I'm deep in thought when I'm at the office. So if I don't say hello, that's why. I just okay. want to tell you that. Because <laughs> I do that. I get very quiet. Okay. But people do that all the time, right? I mean, look at the world, right? I mean, how many wars have been started based on a thought that nobody ever challenged, right? I mean, so many issues in your life, you can think back, and you know, people say, I wish I thought about that more. I say, you didn't think about it at all. You just made a decision, you know, that we've never been taught to figure out first what we're thinking and then how to challenge it. So a lot of times I tell someone, well, you know, what were you thinking when that was going on? And they're like, I don't know, I just felt horrible, you know? So it's just, and then the feeling comes and then like I gotta do something, but I need to feel better. I can't deal with this pain and this anxiety that I'm, you know, feeling. And so again, that's when you go to your behavior, all right? The other thing is the belief out there that your moods create your so if I feel depressed, then I think I'm never going to get better, okay? And the theory of cognitive therapy is that my thought is I'm never going to get better, which makes me feel depressed, and that just feeds into it, okay? Now with a lot of, you know, mental health diagnoses, depression, anxiety, I mean, anything out there, there's, a, you know, for many people, there is a biological issue going on, okay? So that's, I don't want to think, come across like I'm ignoring that, I mean, that's there, but this is the part that you can do something about and change. Okay, um, so your thoughts come first, okay, which creates your moods, affect your behaviors, and then your physical reactions. So physical reactions are anything like, um, you know, if you're sleeping too much, you can't sleep, your appetite changes, your memory, your concentration is poor, you're crying a lot, uh, later we talk about muscle tension, those are all physical reactions, okay, upset stomach, all right, anything that's physical, memories, you know, people are like, I'm like I, you know, I keep losing my keys every day. When people are depressed, you know, your memory's just kind of, you know, you walk in the room and you're like, I forgot what I came in here for <laughs> five minutes ago, you know? But those are all symptoms of depression, anxiety, when you have a lot of stress in your life. That's all part of that. And those are all physical reactions.